This video is an introduction to the magical order of the Fraternitas Saturni or the Brotherhood of Saturn. The Fraternitas Saturni is a German magical order that was founded in 1926. It is one of the oldest of all magical groups in Germany. This lodge, in the words of one of its founders, is concerned with the study of esotericism, mysticism, and magic in the cosmic sense. The FS is still in existence today. Its purpose is stated as working on the spiritual evolution of humanity by means of development and advancement of the individual being to be attained by mental and ethical schooling of the personality and complete mastery of esotericism and occultism. I've been studying this topic for a few weeks now. Information about this group is not easy to come by. I found a few books that were very informative, however, and just finished reading two of them. In addition, I found a chapter in a book that was very helpful. I will try to summarize what I learned from these important sources, which are listed in the video description below if you're interested in doing further research. Probably the two best sources were written by Stephen F. Flowers, PhD, and the two books that he wrote, among others that he's written, were called The Fraternitas Saturni, History, Doctrine, and Rituals of the Magical Order of the Brotherhood of Saturn. And that was just one was just recently revised and published in 2018. And the other one I found helpful was his book, um, The Lords of the Left Hand Path, Forbidden Practices and Spiritual Heresies from the Cult of Set to the Church of Satan, which was published in 2012. And I found his book on the Lords of the Left Hand Path particularly illuminating because I think a lot of people are not really very understanding of the difference between what is called the left hand path and what is called the right hand path. So in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about that. And in addition, talk about the origins of the Fraternitas Saturni group. And then in other videos, I will talk more about their practices. But before I go any further, I want to say something about that terminology of right-hand path and left-hand path, because it's a concept that's not easy, easily defined, and it's very difficult and complex. But Flowers does an excellent job of helping the reader to understand the distinction. And first, in full disclosure, I want to state that I'm an aspirant of the right-hand path, and I'll let Flowers explain more about what that means as I get further into this video. But I found reading about the forbidden practices and spiritual heresies of the Fraternitas Saturni to be somewhat repulsive and fascinating, but somewhat repulsive. And some of them I personally find to be morally repugnant, but I think it's important to take an approach to learning that is apophatic. And what that means is this is the process of deconstructing a concept, of breaking it down and understanding what it is not, of describing characteristics that it does not have. So in order to walk the right-hand path, I have to understand the negative of that, which is the left-hand path. Now, remember, according to the Hermetic Law of Polarity, everything has its opposite and all opposites are only a matter of degree. One of the philosophies that has most impacted my life is called the Law of One. And according to the law of one, the purpose of life on this planet is soul evolution. All souls are trying to make their way back to the one infinite creator or source. And studying this philosophy has helped me to understand that there are two paths back to the creator, the way of service to others or the right-hand path and the way of service to self, which is the left-hand path. According to the law of one philosophy, and these are the words from the first book of the Law of One. The best way of service to others is the constant attempt to seek to share the love of the Creator as it is known to the inner self. This involves self-knowledge and the ability to open the self to the other self without hesitation. This involves, shall we say, radiating that which is the essence or heart of the mind-body-spirit complex. So the goal of the right-hand path practitioner or service to others is to see see yourself, see the creator in yourself, love yourself, and then love other selves because you see the creator in them. Because the, the idea is we're all one and we're all part of one. And that is then the goal of the right-hand path to merge with the 
universal source or to merge with the creator. But on the other hand, the left-hand path is the development of the negatively oriented entity. And this is the path of service to self. And in the law of one philosophy, the negatively oriented entity on the path of service to self will program the maximal separation from and control over all those things and conscious entities which it perceives as being other than the self. So this is the way of separation, not unity. And the the way of the path of the left-hand path is a way of control, domination, and development only of the individual without regard to the other. Each of these paths is a choice. The unfortunate thing is the majority of the human population has made no choice because they're not even aware there is a choice because they're rather spiritually unaware. These are the souls that are referred to in the law of one as 3D repeaters. They will have to continue to repeat third density until they make a free will choice. But for those of us who have chosen our path, either the right-hand path or the left-hand path, the goal is to complete the work we need to do here in order to move on to the next stage of our development. I bring all this up because this has helped me to understand why those who have chosen the left-hand path have done so. Their goal is different from mine. They seek power, control, and domination over others, and I seek love and compassion and truth. They do what they have to do to further their soul growth, and I do what I have to do. Keep in mind, however, that the right-hand path and the left-hand path are not actual sects. They are methods or ways to approach the process of soul growth and evolution. The origin of the terms right-hand and left-hand path dates all the way back to Indian tantric sects, where the two main divisions were Dakshinachara, or right way, and Vamachara, or left way. These tantric sects spoke of a flow of universal energy that goes through the human body along a left-to-right line that enters from the left and exits through the right. There's also a flow of universal energy from the north to the south. When a person is oriented toward the east, the flow pattern is in harmony with the one natural to the body as the left hand is to the north and the right hand is to the south. However, when Flowers describes left-hand traditions, he is speaking of those who practice the reversal of normal patterns. This is called antinomianism. The word antinomianism comes from two Greek words, anti meaning against, and nomos meaning law. Antinomianism means against the law. Flowers says this about reversing the left to right pattern. It is contrary to nature in cosmic law and requires an exercise of the faculty of will. This is an act of rebellion against nature and against divinely ordained cosmic order. So thus the left hand path is about reversal and inversion. Spiritual advancement is achieved through development of the will of the individual. This is why Aleister Crowley, in his Doctrine of Thelema, proclaimed that, Do what thy wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law, love under will. A big part of the left-hand tantric path is purification of the will. Pure will is characterized as being naked, transcendent, capable of self-determination, beyond all antithetical values and all pairs of opposites. Wherever bonds or fetters tie a person down, this person has to systematically break these down. And Anton LaVey, founder of the Church of Satan, urged his followers to indulge in the seven deadly sins of Christianity, greed, pride, envy, anger, gluttony, lust, and sloth, to liberate themselves from the bondage to the conditionings of Western civilization. Radical individualism is essential to the character of the left-hand path. Flowers explains that practitioners of the tantric left-hand path may engage in acts of necrophilia and cannibalism, not for perverse pleasure, but because the practitioners are breaking deep-seated cultural and religious taboos, and by doing so, going beyond the barriers of good and evil in order to attain new levels of power and liberation from human limitations. Again, the end goal is rooted in the concept of antinomianism, the sanctification of the profane. Some sects practice a form of sexual mysticism called the Pancha Makara Rite, or the Five M's. 
The five M's are the elements used in the ritual. In Sanskrit, they stand for matzah, which is fish, mamsa, which is meat, maja, which is intoxicating drink, mudra, which is cereal, and maituna, which is coitus, the act of sexual intercourse. However, Flowers reports that other sects reinterpret the five M's to mean miha, or urine, mamsa, or human flesh, mala, excrement, medha, juice, i.e. blood, and mihana, i.e. penis, i.e. semen. Another technique utilized by practitioners of vamachara or the tantric left-hand path is control of the flow of semen. The idea is to reverse the natural process in order to retain and reabsorb the semen, which is considered a spiritual substance. And some Gnostic sects practice this as well. Flower stresses that all of these techniques are about inverting or reversing the natural processes through the power of will and consciousness. By doing so, the practitioner exercises independence from the natural universe and the ascendancy of the individual self to the level of a divinity or a god. This divinity is to be maintained by the being for eternity. There's no seeking of final liberation or total annihilation of the individual self into the universal self or source, which of course is the goal of the right-hand practitioner. In the practice of kundalini yoga, the purpose is to activate all seven chakras and raise the kundalini energy all the way up the spine to the crown chakra, which is at the top of the head. The aim of this is to unite the practitioner with the universal all. But from the left-hand path perspective, the goal is only to raise the kundalini to the sixth chakra or the ajna chakra, which is the third eye, and from there to enter into three hidden secret chakras that are located at the back of the throat. This means the practitioner will not merge with the crown chakra, with the universal all, with the universal infinite creator source. The left-hand practitioner believes the merging of the self with the universal all causes the I or the self to disappear, and that is exactly what the left-hand practitioner does not want. The right-hand path seeks ultimate union with the divine. The left-hand path seeks permanence and the divine divinity for itself. So you can see the methods of the two paths, even with regard to tantric practice, are very different. And Flowers in his book talks about many other spiritual traditions that have a right-hand path and a left-hand path. It isn't just tantric yoga of the Hindu tradition. There are many others. The magical order of the Fraternitas Saturni, then, or the Brotherhood of Saturn, is a secret organization whose adherents pursue the left-hand path. In the, its beginnings can be traced back to the period between 1926 and 1928. It grew out of a group called the Pansophical Lodge of the Light-Seeking Brethren of the Orient in Berlin. The recognized founder of the order was occultist Eugene Grosch, along with four others. Grosch's lodge name was Gregor A. Gregorius. The members of the Pansophical Lodge studied such topics as Gnosticism, the ancient mysteries of Greece, Egypt, and Babylon, philosophy, religious history, metaphysics, psychology, cosmosophy, and Kabbalah. The leader of this lodge was a man by the name of Heinrich Tronker. Tronker organized a conference near his home in Weide, Germany in 1925 that has come to be called the Weide Conference. Tronker invited the English magician and occultist Aleister Crowley to attend this meeting. At the meeting, Crowley expected to be recognized as Welton Highland or World Savior. He wanted all of the German esoteric societies to submit themselves to his world lodge called the Argentum Astrum AA, sometimes also known as the Silver Star. Crowley had taken over international leadership of another occult organization, the Ordo Templi Orientis or OTO from 1898 to 1900. Crowley was also an initiate of the Golden Dawn, another occult society. In 1904, Crowley channeled a book from a praetor human entity that called itself Iwas. The book came to be called the Book of the Law. And following this, Crowley began to function as a magus or a magician and proclaimed a new aeon with a new word, the lima, which means true will. Unfortunately for Crowley, 
Heinrich Tronker refused to agree to Crowley's demand to be recognized as world savior, and after conflict ensued, Tronker was asked to step down as Grand Master, which, of course, he did not want to do. And eventually, due to this conflict, most of the members of the Pansophical Lodge decided to join the newly founded Fraternitas Saturni. They adopted Crowley's Law of Thelema, but they altered its form slightly. They added on to the Law of Thelema by stating, Do what thy wilt is the whole of the law. Love is the law, love under will. Compassionless love. So the compassionless love part was added on to emphasize the severe Saturnian character of the Fraternitas Saturni. And this is what lets us know that this was a left-hand path lodge. The Fraternitas Saturni had no really further contact with contact with Crowley after adopting his law of Thelema. It remained an independent organization from that point on. Crowley was informed of this decision via two letters he received from Gregor A. Gregorius in 1926 and 1927, which are reprinted in the appendix of Flower's book. Eugene Grosch, or Gregor A. Gregorius, then set up a Society for Esoteric Studies in Berlin in order to attract members to the Fraternitas Attorney Order. He began organizing lectures as well. Some of the lectures included talks on hypnosis, seances, levitation, astrology, and magic. Many of the writings of the FS discussed astral demons, drugs, and sexuality. The main author of these writings was Gregorius. In 1928, another occult organization that worked with sexual magic, organized in Dresden by William Quincher, disbanded and many of the members were recruited into the Fraternitas Saturni. One of these was Eilben Grau, who was art director for the occult journal Saturnosis, which Gregorius published. This was a highly decorated and elegant journal that contained illustrations of demons. Crowley wrote some articles for the first two volumes of this journal, and if you search around, you can find online some copies of what this journal looked like. It was very, very elegant. In 1933, the National Socialist era began in Germany, and all esoteric groups were forbidden. According to the official history of the FS, it was banned at that time, but in reality, it continued until July 1937. Gregorius left Germany in 1936, went to Switzerland, then Italy, and eventually returned to Germany after the war. At that time, he tried to reunite the former members of the Fraternitas Saturni and in 1950 moved to West Berlin. In that year, the FS Lodge was legally registered as the Fraternitas Saturni. And in the next part of this series, I will delve into the teachings of the Fraternitas Saturni.